been suicidal, I've been depressed later on in life, and I've come out from that as well. And I don't want others to waste their life. That if you can spend one second being the creator of your destiny versus the victim of it, then yay, because. That's right, we're on live. We're gonna get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? Welcome to Third Eye Visions, where we motivate the blind, we stimulate the mind, and also welcome all kind. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell. I need y'all to do that. Like, comment, and share if you so desire. You know, we all feel a, a bit down sometimes at various parts in our lives. We need a great pickup. I know I do, especially, especially during these times when so much is going on. Well, this helpful motivational moment can do you wonders i'm speaking with gail who is or has a many of stories but today she's only going to share this motivational story which can help us all during these times she's a, she's she's visually impaired and she has gone through a lot i've talked with her off camera and she's just waiting in the wings for her to come on and share her story and i am too now we have a wide range of audience and i hope we all can benefit from this particular story that she's about to share so without further delay i want to welcome everybody to the show and i also want to welcome you gail how are you doing i am well how are you i'm doing fine how's the weather weather out there weather is going to be 99 today in colorado and if we hold our teeth just right as my mom would say we could break a record and get 100. Oh, okay well i'm hoping y'all don't because i'm telling you out there in the desert area it's kind of kind of <laughs> h-o-t hot right yeah at least we don't have humidity oh, okay well we have it down here in in, in uh, louisiana bad real bad yeah. but in the, anyway enough of the weather report let's get to the, the, <laughs> the message at hand uh where were you born I was born in Indianapolis, Indiana. Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay. And how, how long did you live there? I lived there, well, through high school. Then I went off to college. Okay. And uh, what college did you, did you attend? If you I went to um, William Woods. It's now called the University in Fulton, Missouri, for a bachelor's in music. No, a bachelor of arts degree. And I majored in music and vocal performance. And I had minors in speech and English, also piano and organ. And then I went to Pittsburgh State University in Pittsburgh, Kansas, and got a master's in vocal performance there. Then I came to Colorado and I got a, um, well, I did some doctoral studies for about five years. And then that didn't work out real well. We can talk about that. But uh, then I went to a little known college called Naropa Institute and I got a master's in psychology and counseling. Oh wow. So there you have it. So you're full of degrees and masters, right? Full of it. Yeah. Okay. Well <laughs> let's talk about how you've come to this point to have uh to be able to share this great motivational moment with us. Um you know tell us some of your experiences which which qualifies you to you know to share some of your story with us that can help us all during this time, uh, because we all need a little motivational uh, speech, motivational story, or some inspirational story from time to time. So share with us. Yeah, so how I'm qualified. Well, a, how would I get that master's in psychology and makes me a little bit qualified. And I've been speaking for 20, 30 years to kids and anybody will listen and performing all my life. So, and I've written a book but beyond that, um, I think it's life's hard knocks. And, and for most of my life, I, I pretty much was a victim of my circumstances instead of being the creator of them. And so um, part of the hard knocks was being born prematurely and I'm a twin. 
and he and I were two pounds when we were born. So I'm the one that got 100% pure oxygen in the incubator and became partially sighted and then fully blind. My brother did not. The My parents didn't know how to accept me as a child with a disability. And later on, they'd even deny that I could see, mm. but, which was, and they'd say, why do you tell people you could see? You know, you didn't. So the psychological trauma that they always did, uh, just denying me altogether. None of my words were valuable. Uh, my sisters could say the same thing and they'd be respected. But when I would say it, totally disregarded. Um, they abused me mentally and physically. Um, they would deny that as well. My parents drank. They deny that too. They were good into denial. Uh, so I grew up pretty depressed and isolated and felt like I was invisible and I didn't matter. And back back then, um, I didn't belong to any organization for the blind. I didn't know anything about other organizations. My parents had money and they, um, but they, they didn't give me love or support or the resources to really make it as a person who is blind. And the only person really qualified in that camp was my grandma. And she's the one that showed me love and encouraged my music. And, and then when I'd play piano, I'd go, oh, that's beautiful. And so that was always welcomed. Um, and she touched and nice versus the abuse, which wasn't nice. And she just knew how to nurture, guide and empower me where my parents had no clue, even though they had the money. I, something just came to mind was when I first learned, I didn't have cane travel as a kid. I went to a school for the blind in Indiana, no cane travel. And except then I went to a parochial school for high school and the um, staff there said to my parents, you, you got, she has to learn how to do a cane because we can't be schlepping it from class to class, which is what they did the first year. And so between my freshman and sophomore year, I got cane travel. And I remember my mom, I felt so independent with that cane. It was like, woohoo, I'm free from my mom's arm, yay. And the uh, first time I went out was, was exhilarating. Then the mobility instructor said to her, um, you know, she needs to go, just let her get out of the car and go to a store and buy something, come back to the car. Now we had the car, get out, the curb, go on the curb, the door was right there, go in, counter was right there, buy the grocery, loaf of bread. I was exhilarated. Like my first thing, I, I'm a sophomore in high school. Now kids do this at six years old or sixth grade, but I was a sophomore and I came back and I felt so good. And she said, oh, you'll never do that again because people are staring at you. You know, so psychological. I was telling a story to my friend the other day who, when I was 35, I had a C&I dog and went to a family reunion and got all dressed and ready to go. And my mom says, oh, you're not going. Everybody else in the family went, but not me. So that's just a little bit of my parents' blindness in a way. They had money, but they couldn't really see me for who I was. And why do you think why do you think they were like that towards you um sheltering you or, or, or denying you a chance to have uh, uh, uh at least somewhat of a um uh, a good life in, in yeah they did it as far as money went as far as the education went but as far as fostering independence and self reliance or self um confidence yeah they stopped you know, I, I think I think they didn't want to see my blindness. They were, I think they tried to, you know, if they could just put me in a closet and keep me there. I think they would have done it. Which so, is, so what ultimately happened after that? I mean, you gained your independence. I went to college and um, of course I used a cane there. And then when I was in my master's and college was hard. I mean, back then, ugh, everything, you know, we didn't have spell checkers. We didn't have computers and I'd type it up um, because of Braille and all this. 160 some odd signs at the time. The 
I had bad, horrible spelling, so I was always getting counted down for spelling. But and that's a whole topic, you know, my education, how I was always behind, always, never caught up with everybody else. And, and then when I got my master's in music, the voice teacher there, that's where part of the transition started coming, where she saw me as a singer that happened to be blind, not a blind singer. And because of that, which was a shift, you know, she respected me and I got the lead in two operas and leading operas and, and big ones, you know, as Mimi and La Boheme, Violetta and La Traviata. So um, that and that was empowering. And, and then we went to a contest in Texas and she saw a woman there and that woman had a C&I dog. And she said, Gail, that's what you need because then you could get around so much more independently. And I thought, okay, why not? You know, what do I know? And so I did, I had, I've had five dogs, um, all from the CNI over the years. And that first time, yeah, I put the harness in my hand, I felt so free. And there's advantages and disadvantages and dogs and canes so that I've learned over the years. Right now I'm, I'm in between dogs and I've been using the cane for 14 months now. So, um, you know, canes find the obstacles, dogs go around them. So. so would you say that these things that, that you ventured off to as you had gotten older uh, allowed you to gain a sense of, of um, uh, courage and strength? Because I'm wondering, like, when, when you were, well, I, I'll let you answer that first. Go ahead. I think little by, I think my grandma instilled um, love in me, that there is love. and and. Certainly, like babies who don't have any love, and then one if one person shows them that, they will have the desire to thrive. And so, I think Grandma was that person in my life, and I think she's the foundation for that there is spirituality and something bigger um, that to lean on. I don't know if I knew that then, but looking back, that's totally what she did, and she did talk about that. Um, and then I think my voice teacher was the next person that showed me love after Grandma and empowered me in it, certainly musically and nurtured me. She let me live at her house for a year and a half. And she was a great mentor, voice teacher and supporter, just a really wonderful person. I've always seemed to find somebody in my life that could guide me on my way. So, so were, you afraid, were you afraid to take these ventures considering the fact that your, your parents had, had kind of denied you of actually being an independent blind person? Probably so, but probably the good news, by then I was out from underneath their thumb, so they couldn't do too much about it. They, they probably, you know, they supported me in, you know, in, well, they didn't support me, but they kind of did. Like, you know, whatever I did is what I did by that time. And, but, and yet that still didn't keep them from denying me to go to that family reunion later. So in a way they still, they, my family sees me as blind, the helpless victim, can't do anything person. And they still do. They still see me as that. Even though my parents aren't alive anymore, my brothers and sisters, those kind of support me. But I know if you really asked them, they think that Gail still at 67 years old will never make it. Wow. Yeah. Do you have contact with them by any chance? Yeah, yeah. here and there. Okay, so, what, so seven minutes away, but he only contacts me at Christmas. So, there you go. <laughs> so um, as far as you you being uh, out from or getting out from under the thumb and feeling a sense of in, uh, independence through the uh, the people that you met, tell everyone what's what, what are you what are you doing now in order to stay motivated? Because sometimes I'm quite sure you kind of reflect on how your people or your parents treated you and kind of you know make make you feel a bit you know like wondering why at times but what's keeping you on the path of staying motivated and and continuing uh, as a blind person i think what has pretty much always motivated me was that i have a story to tell i have a purpose in life and the purpose to me seems to be to motivate educate and accelerate people to open their eyes and see who they are to to live their dreams, to fly on their wings, to to be more than they are. I spent so much of my life, I mean, you know, I, I've been suicidal, I've been depressed in my, later on in life, and I've come out from that as well. 
and I don't want others to waste their life that if you can spend one second being the creator of your destiny versus the victim of it then yay because we're not here to be victims of anything so blindness corona what have you you know we have we have the chance to be in line with our spiritual source to have a positive attitude and then to take some kind of action every day and what keeps me motivated is i love what i do i love empowering people i love inspiring people that we're not here to work nine to five we're not here to be victims and to scrabble and to scrap and to struggle we're really here to fly hence my name soaring into greatness because mm-hmm. what we're supposed to be doing that's great that is great so with that being said if there was someone right now in front of you who has gone through what you've gone through in terms of being denied and not really as a child not really allowing themselves to soar or, or to experience what it's like even though they're blind and they are a little they're a bit depressed and on the verge of just giving up what would you say to that person that's in front of you right now don't give up there's always a way through it you know if you don't have the idea of how to do that yourself go get help therapy's great um, i've been a good one of that um but get talk to somebody you're not alone there's always somebody that's been there before you to take your hand and show you the way. And there's going to be somebody out that you can guide and inspire too. You know, you, you are, there's something out there for you. Um, you have worth, you have value, you have something to give and to share. There's always a way. Pick up the phone, get on the internet, talk, talk to somebody that's a champion of you. Don't talk to somebody that says, yeah, life's horrible and hard and because that, that they only bring you farther down. Find somebody that you really admire and talk to that person. Wow. wow. Words of uh, Miss Gail definitely can uh, soar through a lot of individuals who not only feel this way because they're they're blind, but just at, at any time where you may feel down, because I mean, these are some trying times and it's easy to just feel disappointed and just want to give up. And the words that you provided can definitely help our other individuals. Uh, what's coming up next for you? Well, I have lots of podcasts that I'm doing because being a motivational speaker and a performer, there aren't any live audiences out there. So I'm concentrating on podcasts. I'm concentrating on blogs and um, I will say, should say my website and I have a book that I've written. So that could also help people if you're depressed, read the book because, you know, it has a happy ending. You know, there's people say, oh, most of it's really depressing. I go, well, that was my life. But it does, you know, I, I've since turning my psyche around and realizing that I can live a destiny, you know, I've built a Habitat for Humanity house. I've written the book. I was Miss Colorado Senior America Queen in 2013. I was fourth in the country. Um, so beating out 29 people who had sight. So that was pretty amazing. And so, and I'm, oh, I went to Australia in February. It's pretty cool. And what was that um, like? Oh, amazing. I climbed the Sydney Harbor Bridge, which was 75 stories tall, of lights and stairs tall. So, yeah, two, I think I climbed 28,000 steps that day. <laughs> okay. and, 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 and give the name of the book. You're welcome to give the name of the website and the book. Plus, I'm going to put it in the link. So tell everybody what it is. So the website and the book are almost the same. The uh, website is, of course, www.soaringintogreatness.com. And the book is the same name, Soaring Into Greatness. And then the bylines of Blind Woman's Vision to Live Her Dreams and Fly, I think. <laughs> I don't use the byline very often, but uh, yeah, soaring into greatness is what you remember, and that's the website. And the email is the same, Gail at soaring into greatness. So there's a theme here, soaring into greatness. Okay, well, definitely, I love I love that title. So I want to thank you for coming on this show, and you all definitely uh, support Gail and. Uh, maybe check out a book or go to a website and um, you know learn a little bit because as I mentioned we all need that motivational moment I know I do from time to time so with that being said you want to leave us with some final words the only thing I forgot to say was the book 
for um, for the blind population listening to this is available on Bard, so you can get it there, and or through Amazon. But yeah, just go live your dreams and stop being the victim of your circumstances and be the creator of them. You can do it. Okay. Well, thank you all. I want to thank y'all for tuning into her story and make sure to stay subscribed and get very inspirational stories like these and others. My name is Anthony Parker. For Gail, I am out.